Hey, everybody, it's Mrs. Wilson. I hope there's no lag in this feed as I always love to stream live here. And my internet, ironically, is telling me it's unstable. Hopefully it's going to work. Okay, I wanted to do a wrap up of a really fun project that I did for a uh, lesson. And share uh, lesson shares with my students. And it had to do with making your own salt dough. And when I say salt dough, I should point out that it actually had more than salt in it. You need three ingredients to make homemade dough, okay? And this dough is an air dry dough. This is really cool if you have a child who is young, but you know, you can be in middle school or an adult and enjoy this project. Um, these are examples of my homemade dough ornaments that I created with this dough. To make this dough, you need a bowl and then you need one cup salt, one cup flour, and a half cup of cold water. Then you mix all that up in a bowl and you stir and stir until it starts to really get pasty. Then you take it out and you use your hands and just mold it and squeeze it and mold it. And if it's a little bit too dry, a little bit too wet, add a little bit more flour or salt, whatever you have. Any flour will work and any dough will work. And I actually just thought, wait, any salt will work. And I just thought about this and I'm gonna pull up close for a good friend of mine and her children far, far away in a beautiful place called Fiji. Paulina, if you're watching, because I'll share this with you. Because you live in an island where there is sand everywhere, you could substitute sand for the salt. So how about that? Bula, miss you. Hope you're well. Anyway, for people that are watching elsewhere, if you have access to salt, so <clears throat> salt and water, and flour are all I use to make these really cool ornaments. Now, what I did is I rolled them out on a, on a table with a rolling pin, and then I took an object before they were completely dry, or before I, when I took them out of a cookie cutter shape, I used something to poke them with. I had a little wooden stick, but I, if you didn't have that, just using a pencil, something that you're not super concerned about, you wanna make sure that hole is poked through all the way before it's dry. Now, here's the other thing. That would be like if you want to hang it on a Christmas tree, which is what I'm hoping to do. Um, the bigger the ornament, though, the heavier they could be. Now, here's one that I baked. And actually, I should say that. There are some that I made that were baked. And on purposely, I didn't bake some as an experiment. I have figured out that if you want to bake them, they will get dry really quick. And I just feel like that also keeps them from falling apart better. That big heart that I showed you was in fact baked before I cooked it or before I painted it. I'll talk about that. So if you want to bake your salt flour dough mixture after you make ornaments or whatever you make with them, whatever you make with the project, you could try to make something 3D, but it tends to want to fall uh, because it's not a clay like, uh, like a real clay that will hold its shape. It's going to want to sink. So this is good for something that is flat like an ornament. Uh, don't eat it. It's not a cookie. <laughs> anyway, you want to bake it at 175 degrees or a very low temp in your kit in your oven for 20 minutes. I put them on parchment paper on a baking sheet. Now, one more thing, and this is where I'll get creative in my creativity zone here before I take a break for the holidays for Thanksgiving from work. Oh, yeah, I do have a turkey hat. This is for my youngsters. Why not? Because you know what? Thanksgiving's coming, so happy Thanksgiving, people. Now, um, on this tray, which, oh, my goodness, it's the famous artwork by Vincent Van Gogh, Starry, Starry Night, one of my favorite famous artists. I use this as a tray to put things. But for you to be able to see what I'm doing better, actually, I'll say goodbye to Vincent, Starry, Starry Night. Very popular piece. One of my favorite artists. Sadly, he never really made any money from his art. Now I'm on a rant. Let me get back to the point. Um, I'm just going to show you that I have things here in my home that I was painting these ornaments with. And I did have a turkey uh, cookie cutter. So I wanted to show you before I paint it that I'm just using watercolors. I particularly like to find old watercolors on eBay that are really old. I kind of think that their colors might actually be in better shape than some of the others. And I just save containers to put water in. And I'm going to get started here to show you something really quickly, though. Um, <clears throat> I I already painted this one. And when I put the paint on, I just sort of had to drip it on. OK, so if you don't like using uh, watercolors, that that's the effect you're going to get. If you'd prefer to have a very.
practice effect, you might want to use acrylic or maybe temper paint. Um, I did paint one in temper paint. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, it's kind of chalky looking. Temper paint has that tendency to do that. Another thing you could do is if you want to kind of avoid that from happening at the end is get yourself some glue. And when you're done with the paint, what you could do, this actually will work really well for you. You could actually get a wet brush and just kind of paint that on. And it'll dry clear. And what'll be really nice is it'll make that paint look a little bit smoother and shiny. That's an old world tip from art teachers from long ago, working on a very tight budget for supplies. Otherwise, you could be you could, if you had a bigger budget to work with, if you had more money, you could buy the stuff called varnish, which is a painting on surface that is used with acrylic paint. Um, but I don't think you need to do that. Obviously, if you have glue, whoops, there's my thumb. You could always do things like add, um, you know, you could put glue and you could put beads on these things. You could do sequins. Obviously, using your own imagination and your own creativity zone. Where I love to say when people make art. Oops, and it's okay to make accents, people. I do that all the time. Um, <laughs> you can be creative with whatever you have. Um, like for right now, I just hate wasting things. I'm kind of, I think that's what happens when you're an art teacher for almost 20 years and you have to work with budgets and all that good stuff. I'm just going to demonstrate that like with watercolor, you could have it go on really, really quick. But because of this dough, even if you cook it, again, 175 for 20 minutes will do the trick. It is going to want to soak in. So I do what I love to call wet on wet with the watercolor where you just sort of wet everything and kind of make it look kind of tie dye. Meanwhile, I did figure out something kind of neat that I did with this one. I carefully painted that and it is hard to, to keep the areas from drying or dripping. So somehow I got a little bit of paint on that side. I think what I'll do is just touch that up. But before I do that, I'll just point out that remember the clay is going to soak any watery paint in. So it's tricky might want to see how I'm using very little paint, very little water. And I'm just dabbing the tip to add this new color. I'm adding some purple over the red on the side there. It's going to want to drip in like a sponge. See how I'm doing that? Now on the other side, I'm just going to try to flip it. It looks shiny and glittery if you can see it as I move it over the camera. The reason it looks that way is I literally found some glitter nail polish. I like to paint my toenails, but you may notice boys and girls and adults or anybody watching that Mrs. Wilson uses her hands to make art. And I am also hopefully going to be adventuring into getting back into making pottery as I have a pottery studio in the works in part of my home in a shed eventually that I'll get to when I'm not multitasking doing so many other things. Anyway, so I, I just, I'm just not the type of person that paints my nails, but sometimes I do find good deals. I'm a bargain shopper. So I found this one set of little glitter nail polishes one time, which out by the way, they look like a snowman. They were probably for a Christmas gift or something. Um, this glitter nail polish is pretty cool because it's very glittery. So what's really fun about that is I can take it just like with this heart and I can just paint with it on this heart. In fact, this is how I'm going to do it. Um, note to uh, any young, whoop, there he goes that. I'll hold it still, I guess. Any, I'm just going to hold it. Any young people watching this alone, um, true story from Mrs. Wilson, please don't just start using things like this in your home without asking the person that they belong to first. Uh, do not go to your mother's medicine cabinet or, or uh, bathroom. And if you know where your mom keeps lipsticks, for example, figure out, hey, this is a really cool red. I'm going to use this to draw with. Again, this is where I love to share true stories with Mrs. Wilson when Mrs. Wilson just demonstrates to paint and say, you know, if your sister or your mom or anybody in your home has glittery nail polish and you're a five-year-old, or so do not just go get it and paint with it and say, oh, I saw that on the creativity zone and that teacher's my art teacher. So I can do that. No, you need to ask an adult or the people in your home before you take anything of theirs and use it. I was about four years old when I, I have this clear vision and memory of this. I don't know. I was making some kind of a drawing in my bedroom where I made art um, very similar to my studio where I make art now. And I, the bathroom upstairs from there, my bedroom was, Right there, we only had one bedroom, and my house is where I grew up. It's just two two small bedrooms, one where my parents were and one for me. 
uh, I found my mom's lipsticks and, and I don't know why, but, but I just decided to take them and I made this really cool picture and I gave it to my mom using all these really cool, beautiful pink and red lipsticks. And I, I can remember clearly her smiling, but then her saying, I wish you would have asked me before you went and used all my lipsticks to make a drawing. So tips from Mrs. Wilson as an adult, as a person, as an art teacher, please remember life lessons here. Always ask your family before you just go take something in your home to use for art. But having said that, the reason I bring all that up is how you don't have to use traditional paints to be creative in your home. You might have dye, as in food coloring. You might be able to be creative and use things that people would normally throw away. Also going to say to you, you may notice like this, this one here is real, real thin. I tested this on purpose. I painted it with watercolors. This was one of the ornaments that my husband, Mr. Wilson, made for his kindergarten class or first grade class or somebody to show them this week in uh, online classes. He didn't, he didn't bake this. So because it was so thin, it dried quickest. But he didn't bake it, and I painted it, and I've been real careful with it, and it's fine. Meanwhile, this one baked, but for some reason, I don't know why, it got cracked. I'm going to enjoy the expression that we are unique because of our imperfections. I kind of like the way it looks. I like the way the cracks are there. And I like how what happened was the dark purple watercolor went into those cracks. And, you know, it's kind of cool because even though I, for some, you know, we have stars associated um, at Christmas time for things. I kind of like how it, it really kind of is starting to remind me of a uh, galaxy type image. You know, it kind of looks like a nighttime sky. And I am going to keep my color pattern sticking with thoughts about the color wheel. So this lesson is now rolling up into 12 minutes and it is just a fun share that if perhaps you want some tips on a few things, there's a few things rolled into one here. Color. If you mix opposite colors with your watercolors or any kind of paints that you paint these ornaments, Complementary colors are opposite colors, and you could think of the two colors that are Christmas oriented, red and green. Red and green are opposite. If you accidentally put them together, they're going to run and turn brown. So you want to keep warm colors and cool colors possibly separate or colors that are opposite of each other. Like I use pink and purple in that, which are called analogous. If I put blue in there, it's going to be fine because blue creates purple. Pink which is a variation of red if you added white, or it's a lighter version of red, really, in this watercolor set. That's fine. And by the way, the uh, nail polish, if you're using nail polish on any of your, your objects, look how shiny and pretty that got now. It, it is a little uh, strong, the smell. So you might want to do that outside or not put your face right up to it like I'm doing. But I was going to say also, um, like with this other side of the star, I got yellow going on, okay? But if I put yellow on top of that pink and purple, Yellow and purple are opposite colors, also called complementary. So if I put yellow and purple together, I'm going to end up with brown. Again, the Christmas colors, red and green, are also complementary or opposite. So if they are put together in a way that you accidentally mix them, they will turn brown. And then the last two colors I haven't mentioned, which are complementary, are orange, which is my favorite color, and blue. So if you mix orange and dark blue or orange and blue of any kind, by accident, those colors may turn brown. So if you're using watercolor, which is what I had fun and did, and I just, I really like watercolor. I have a lot of watercolor in my studio. But if you're using watercolor in your studio or in your art room or in your home to do painting detail to the salt dough ornaments, what you want to remember is this. The dough will soak up the paint because it's made out of clay. It's made out of a porous material. So it's going to want to run. And in the end, you might end up choosing to make things that look a little bit more like tie-dye. And I also will say that I used a giant heart cookie cutter to create these two ornaments so to speak ornaments that I'm sort of in the process of doing I will tell you that you may discover that if you are using something in your home to make ornaments with you may want to use a small 
ornament cutter for a real object that you would want to hang on the tree because the heavier it is, the more likely it's going to hang down and maybe it would fall off the hook or it could break something, including the ornament itself. I have not tested any of one of these on purpose, but I'll just kind of do the trick here. Wow, it passed the test. I just took one of these Salto ornaments that I baked and, okay, that one made a chip. The first one didn't make any, it, it just totally landed with no cracking. So it's, they're pretty strong, but I did want to say to you that be careful with your ornaments if you made them and you liked them. And hey, it is, uh, it's a couple days before Thanksgiving. It's actually the day before Thanksgiving and I am going to be taking a break after teaching remote and teaching online and teaching my 39 classes and my 661 students. But I hope that everybody here has a happy Turkey day. <laughs> And I also want to say that whether you get to uh, have turkey for Thanksgiving or not, which is a national tradition, I prefer chicken. Uh, think about what the, the holiday means. It's all about being thankful and not being thankful for material things like having a car and having a pretty house or whatever. Be thankful for the people in your lives. Be thankful for those people at home that are helping you and be thankful for things you have that other people don't have that they wish they had. And uh, I hope that everybody has a wonderful holiday and thank you for watching me in the creativity zone. Stay creative kids, people keep making art for watching.